In this video, we're going to solve a linear system by using an iterative method. That means that we're going to build a sequence of vectors xn that will converge toward a vector x that will be the solution to the system ax equals b. To do this, we will write a as m minus n, where m is a non-singular matrix. And we will consider the numerical method here, m x n plus 1 equals n x n plus b. Now, obviously, if x n converges toward x, then you expect uh, m x to be equal to n x plus b, which means that you expect m x minus n x to be equal to b, which means that you expect a x to be equal to b, so x should be uh, indeed the solution to the system. So this makes sense. However, uh, there are a few caveats that you need to control. Uh, the first one is the remark that is here. Uh, obviously, at each step of my numerical method, to find xn plus 1, I need to solve the linear system. So some people could say, okay, so to solve the linear system, I need to solve the linear system. Wow. That's really good news, right? Um, well, yeah, I mean, it, it's true, it seems weird, but remember, M will be a, a matrix that you can control slightly. I mean, you will choose M, uh, so you need to choose M in such a way that solving the system at each step is easy. For instance, you can take a diagonal matrix or a triangular matrix, and if you do this, then uh, hopefully it will be easy to solve this linear system, much easier, obviously, than solving uh, a, uh, a x equals b. So first remark is that each iteration you need to solve a linear system, but you're the one choosing m, so you need to do this accordingly. Now, what you want to have is the uh, spectral radius of m inverse time n strictly smaller than 1. And if you have this, then this numerical method will work, and uh, you can go back to uh, the video of section 3 to understand why. All right, so now we need to choose an M and an N that are suitable. The first possible choice is uh, Jacobi, where you're going to choose M, which will be the diagonal terms of A, and N, which, well, once you choose M, obviously N is, uh, at this point, is set, it's uh, basically minus a plus diagonal of a. Uh, so if you, if you choose m uh, like this and n like that, um, well, the, the first remark here is that solving uh, m x n plus 1 equals n x n plus b will be easy because m is a diagonal matrix. So all you need to do is really, uh, well, it's obviously extremely simple to, to find x n plus 1 at each iteration. Uh, let me actually, uh, well, do an example here, uh, and let me actually just, uh, well, uh, consider again the, well, let's actually consider the metrics that we've uh, studied, uh, studied, I mean, that we have this, you know, I mean, that we've mentioned earlier, this matrix, so I'm entering this matrix here, A, uh, I'm entering a B, uh, that will be 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, why not, and I'm going to try to find X such that A X equals B. Uh, so first, I'm going to enter M and N. Uh, well, this is just some syntax to actually have the diagonal terms of A. Uh, and obviously, once I have M, well, N is easy to compute. Let me uh, print all three matrices A, M, and N to make sure that no mistakes were made. Here is A, here is uh, M, and here is N. It seems okay. All right. Now, at this point, what I'm going to do is to to, to Start iterating, starting with you know a random vector uh, x x zero. So that's uh, x uh, equals this uh, random vector with four components. That's a fancy way to write it. Uh, I'm going to write the number of iterations here, and then I'm going to iterate. So the right hand side is obviously uh, n times uh, x plus b, and I'm going to to solve, uh, I'm a little cheating here because I'm using uh, a, a way to solve a linear system, but again, uh, I, I could write the full thing 
uh, I'm just taking a shortcut here to, to so, 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 so it's easier to, to, to write and to understand. And here is the list of, uh, of vectors. So, so basically, uh, here's my sequence, right? I mean, uh, here's the list of x, x0 to x1, x2, all the way to x25 or x24. Uh, and, and here is what happens with the last vector. I mean, basically, I'm taking like the, the, the um, you know, having this, this, uh, this, this, this loop working. And then I take the very last vector that I computed. And is that a good uh, approximation of the solution to my system? Well, to see what I do is AX and I see whether I find B. And uh, well, pretty obviously, uh, I do. That's indeed one, two, three, four. So here is for Jacobi. Uh, let me make another choice of M and N, and that will be Gauss-Seidel. Uh, M will be uh, the lower terms, the lower triangular terms of A, and N will be minus, well, obviously, whatever uh, you know, remains, the, the upper uh, part of the, of, the, of the matrix. So indeed, M minus N is equal to A, and let's actually try to see if, uh, let's actually put this together. So again, I'm going to, um, well, to call numpy as usual, to enter my matrix A that we have been uh, using so far. And uh, I'm going to, to enter uh, the uh, vector B, which again will be 1, 2, 3, 4. And at this point, what I will do is to enter the matrix M and the matrix N. So I'm using two uh, functions here, which is try L for lower and try U for upper. Uh, and then uh, here's M and N. I'm printing all three matrices, making sure that no mistakes were made. And at this point, I'm going to do exactly what I did before, which is to, well, start with a vector x0, which obviously is in the variable x, uh, which is random. And then what I'm going to do is consider a number of iterations and do a little loop like I did before. Uh, and that will provide me with, uh, you know, the terms of my, of my sequence that are going to be uh, printed uh, here once I actually enter it, and there we are. Here uh, is, uh, you know, the, the, the sequence of vectors, and let's verify what happens when I do A, X with the last vector, and I get indeed one, two, three, four. So here is for Gauss uh, Seidel. Now, what we saw is two iterative methods that use this concept of having this M X N plus one equals N X N plus B. Uh, there is another possible iterative method called the conjugate gradient. Uh, and basically, actually, uh, it's uh, considering the problem as an optimization problem. I mean, if you are trying to solve AX equals B, then the norm of AX minus B should be zero, right? So if you really look at the function that X and X and associate the norm of AX minus B, then that function, if you find the minimum, and hopefully the minimum will be zero, then you actually uh, find the X that will satisfy the, the minimum, the arg min, uh, will be the, the solution to our system. So you can actually convert your solving this linear system into an optimization problem. And then what you have to do is to solve, uh, is, to, is, to, is to optimize your function. Now, you will have a full course on optimization coming up next year, so I won't uh, get into any details regarding how to uh, optimize and, and uh, what are the algorithms to do so. You will see this next year. I just wanted to point out that one of the algorithms is called the conjugate gradient, and it is largely used actually to uh, solve uh, AX equals B with, uh, you know, for, for, for the reasons I just explained. So uh, if you actually apply this, this conjugate gradient, um, you actually have a, a, a another uh, iterative method to find the solution to the system AX equals B.